What's going on, YouTube? Um, I've spent the last month or so preparing for the Chicago uh, Larkana Challenge this weekend. Uh, we fly out tonight, and I wanted to take a quick minute to share with you the decks that we're going to be taking with us. Um, and uh, uh, just go over them quickly. Um, to be 100% honest, I'm not... Uh, completely locked down on what I'm going to play. Uh, what I do know is I'm not going to be playing the meta um, choice. I'm not going to be playing uh, the kind of green steel list that everyone is playing. Um, I kind of prefer to be playing something that's a little bit off meta. Um, and so uh, that's true for me here too. Um, I, I wouldn't have fun going to Chicago playing um, the, the meta choice um, that everyone's going to be playing. Um, I realize that a lot of people are going to be playing uh, Red Blue as well, and um, that is one of the decks that I am uh, considering. But um, I also just really don't like discard. Um, I think the the point of playing the game is to have cards in hand and be able to do things, and I don't think it's fun um, taking cards away from people and uh, making it so that they can't play the game. Um that's just my take on, on Bucky uh, and on discard in general. So I tend to not play discard um, even when it's meta. Um, so I try to brew something a little bit off meta. Um, so I'm going to take you through the, the decks that I am considering. I've been putting a lot of reps into red blue. Um, I've honestly been really frustrated with the deck recently. Um, I played it last night in the lore 20. Um, uh, uh, tournament and uh didn't do very well um just like bricked out lost uh, a lot of games that felt kind of beyond my control and so for that reason i'm probably not going to play it in the main event but i am going to take it with me to chicago um because i might play it in a side event um in constructed uh, or uh the 3v3 um or multiplayer um you know uh one of those uh situations so um I'll share with you the list that I have kind of settled on um, to take uh, to Chicago. Um, this is the ultimately just the list that won the pack uh, this last weekend. I've tested tons and tons of variations of this list, um, and ultimately I just don't think that anything I've tested is, is better than uh, a list that probably topped uh, a tournament this weekend, uh, this last weekend. So uh, I'm just going to take that list. Um, I think it's good enough. I think it does um, pretty much everything that I would want it to do. Um, uh, it runs two copies of Sisu, uh, Emboldened Warrior for kind of a little bit of early lore gain and to be able to compete with uh, some of the Flins that might get dropped uh, on board early. Um, one copy of Judy to be able to, you know, hopefully maybe take away an item uh, in a clutch spot, you know, a, a lucky dime late game or, or something like that. Um, Two copies of Moana, which I think is uh, kind of an interesting inclusion. Uh, it's an evasive 3-4, um, and I think it's really just in here to, to kind of compete with the Pegasuses and the Diablos and um, kind of give some sort of board presence that can threaten those pieces. Um, so uh, it, that's not a place where I've felt too vulnerable um, with this deck. Uh, usually it's just that I don't draw the answers that I, I need to draw. Um, but having a little bit of diversity of board presence, uh, earlier, um, might be helpful. So I'm going to, I'm going to run those, um, and, and see how they, they feel. Uh, the rest of it's pretty standard. Um, four copies of the Gramotala, four copies of Hiram Maui, uh, three copies of the Medusa, one copy of Tremaine. I think there's still a place for Tremaine um, in this deck, uh, or possibly King Undisputed. Um, I think that place uh, largely has to do with uh, the mirror and uh, Tomatoa and uh, Maleficence, right? When other Maleficence start slamming down on the board, your only answer is Maleficent. Um, and it's really nice to be able to play a cheaper uh, answer that allows you to do additional things to the board state um, and help you kind of recover after be prepared, um, you know, as you're kind of trading Medusas or trading Maleficence, etc. Um, uh, 
four copies of the Tomatoa, four copies of the Maleficent, um, three copies of Develop Your Brain. This is just to kind of squeeze in that Judy and, and Moana's. Um, four copies of the Brawl, two Be Prepared, th uh, three copies of How Far I'll Go, four One Jumps, uh, three Ice Blocks, four Popsicles, four Fishbone Quills, two Dimes. So pretty standard stuff. Um, I am taking a, a couple of kind of additional cards for this deck. I'm taking an additional Sisu, an additional Be Prepared, an additional how far I'll go um, so that I can kind of like flex stuff around um, just depending on how I'm feeling um, you know I might take the Moana out or um, you know decide I want to put the extra develop back in or you know go with three one jumps and four how far I'll goes or you know um, I'll still be doing a little bit of tuning here um, in in the next day or so uh, with my wife um, so th this was the deck that I was planning on playing the main event with, um, but I'm kind of trending away from that, to be honest. Um, I, I just, you know, running the those 20 uninkables uh, or 20 plus uninkables um, is, is rough. And uh, I end up in situations that I don't like very much. I end up in situations where I have to ink a Hiram early that I don't want to be inking that Hiram. Um, you know, inking a Grandma Tala when I'd rather play that Tala. Um, you know, it, I ramp so hard and then I'm so far behind on board state and, you know, I, I have very few cards and, and so I'm trying to draw as, as hard as I can and, and get the answers. But if I don't draw the answers, I'm just dead. So, um, it, it's kind of a frustrating way to play. And, um, I'm for that reason, I'm kind of, uh, moving off of this deck. Um, this is the deck that my wife is going to play, uh, in Chicago. Um, so We've been trying to make Emerald Amethyst tempo work. It feels really bad into steel, obviously, um, and into uh, green steel. So we've been trying to, you know, figure out um, other ways to kind of get around that, um, you know, or, or ways to um, be able to win that matchup. Um, and uh, this is our, our kind of attempt at it. Um, so we're running uh, four Merfolk, uh, four of the one drop Diablo, um, four Blue Fairy, and the, the Blue Fairy here is just to give you a different draw strategy. Um, you know, this deck normally runs Rabbits. Um, I, rabbits being uninkable um, kind of limits your deck in a lot of ways, and um, going into a big tournament um, I want to be careful with the number of uninkables that we're running, um, especially because we're running uh, the four Diablo, which, you know, are, are mandatory. Um, the, uh, you know, two copies of, of Mothers. Um, there's just a, a lot of uh, uninkability with the Merfolk already. Um, and we're running uh, this card, um, Peter Pan uh, Shadow Finder. Um, this card's really great. Um, it uh, is kind of the inverse of uh, Peter Pan, uh, Peter Pan's Shadow from uh, Floodborne. Um, Shadowfinder only quests for one, which is one of the big differences. Uh, it's the same body, it's a 2 3 body, uh, but it has kind of the inverse effect. It has rush and evasive, uh, and it gives your other characters with evasive rush. And so um, rather than run uh, the Shadow in this deck, um, because we're running you know, these other evasive characters like uh, a Diablo, um, like a Pegasus, uh, and uh, like an Isabella, which is kind of one of our, our um, you know, uh, secret, uh, I don't know if it's a secret, but uh, one of our kind of uh, attempts to change this deck here. Um, you know, giving them rush is is really big, actually. Um, being able to play uh, an Isabella and bring it onto the field and remove a Pegasus and still live. Bring it onto the field and be able to remove a Diablo and still live, even if Diablo is at Cove. Um, you know, some of those are, are big plays that can really kind of help, um, uh, you know, really help you win the game. Um, so... Uh, that's one reason we're running uh, a little bit less uh, rabbits and, and introducing the fairy as a way to draw um, because you do have the uh, uh, floodborns of Diablo, which can come on three uh, Pegasus, which can come on three and then three copies of uh, the 
uh, seven drop Ursula that is shift five. Um, and we were actually a, a fan of this card in this deck. Um, you know, it, it quests for three. It's a big body. It can't be Medusa unless um, it can be ice blocked. Um, you know, it kind of has to be answered. Um, and the ability to exert uh, chosen characters um, is really useful to be able to challenge a, a character that just got played uh, on an opponent's board. Um, you know, uh, keeping other characters from singing is pretty oppressive, it forces them to use their ink um, to, to sing. And, uh, you know, so we're um, kind of a fan of, of this card in this deck. Um, of course, you can shift it on top of the two drop Ursula, um, which you're kind of playing and bouncing back and forth. Um, usually turn one looks like Diablo, uh, shift Diablo on two, start drawing cards, um, you know, discarding one of your actions. Um, we're also running Hidden Cove, um, three copies of Hidden Cove. Um, and that helps in the mirror a lot. It helps against Emerald Steel, um, because you can put, uh, you know, your Diablos, um, on Hidden Cove and now they have three strength and they can't be removed just with, um, you know, uh, um, let the storm rage on, right. Uh, or fire the cannons or something like that, or boom, right. They, they have to, to do a little bit more. Um, We've got the, the Mim package, uh, Snake and uh, Fox. Uh, we're not running Goat, which I think, you know, is a little unfortunate here. Um, you know, I, maybe there's a, a way to kind of like rebalance this deck and, and bring Goat back in at some point. You know, maybe we move away from Fairy and, and move back to the Rabbits and, and Goat comes back in and, in some capacity. But, um, you know, I, I think the rest of this is, is pretty standard. Um, EA tempo stuff, uh, except for Isabella. Um, you know, one of the things we've noticed with this deck is that this deck can have trouble closing. You can get out to a pretty um, good early lead in games, um, but you can have real problems closing games. And you're still going to have some problems against Ruby uh, with Medusas and Tremaines and Maleficence and, and all of the kinds of removal that they have. But against Steel in particular, um, putting uh, Isabella down on the board um, means that they have to spend Zeus and most decks are only running a couple copies of Zeus these days um, you know or they're seeing swords twice or they're having to double sing you know something with with Ursula and um, you know her ability to quest for four um, you know it is really big in terms of closing the game late game um, especially when you can uh, play an Ursula Deceiver and maybe strip one of those songs and then get Isabella down um, and, uh, you know, be able to to just sit her on the board and then be able to quest for four next turn. Um, it puts a really uh, tight clock on your opponent and um, it's helped us kind of close out games uh, where this deck has has struggled in the past um she's planning on on playing this deck this weekend in the main event um we'll see you know how far she goes i think it definitely um still has some weaknesses uh against the meta um i think you know maybe running four copies of mothers would be better um i still am a huge fan of kit and um you know not running kit uh i think is a, a little bit of a problem for this deck um but you know, you can only run so many cards. So uh, this is this is our attempt at Isabella for this weekend. Um, for side events, um, and what I'm thinking about actually running in the main event now, um, I've constructed this deck. Um, so this is kind of an aggro uh, Ruby uh, Amethyst list. Um, it's very low to the ground for the most part. Um, our curve tops out at six with Yzma and two copies of Medusa. Um, you're not going to see Be Prepared in this list. You're not going to see Maleficent. You're not going to see Tremaine in this list. Instead, um, our game plan here is to really be aggressive early and get um, aggressive cards like Flynn on the board, followed by Sisu, um, followed by Li Shang. Um, that's kind of our, our primary um, way of getting lore here. Um, you know, Flynn, 
uh, at the start of your turn, if you have a character in play with more strength than your opposing uh, characters, you gain three lore. So, um, you know, our, our early game, we're able to get, uh, you know, maybe a Mim out on board. We're able to get um, a Li Sheng uh, out on board. Um, you know, a, a Sisu out on board while they still have lots of cards in hand. Um, and we're going to be good a lot of the time for that. Um, and when we're not, um, we can, uh, you know, work on removing those threats um, so that we are good. Um, four strength is going to be good in a lot of uh, cases to to get those three lower points. Um you know, and of course, if you can get two Flynn's down, getting six lore in a single turn um, is just devastating, plus the, you know, additional points for questing. Um, you can really win the game very, very quickly. Um, in the one drop slot, we're running the Magic Broom. Um, I, I decided to opt for the Broom because... Um, of the kind of quick card draw it can give you. Um, you can play it and draw in the same turn if you need to, to replace it. Um, you, you don't need to wait until you quest with it. Uh, you know, in, in the case of Chernabog or, um, you know, one of the one, three drops that you might want to bounce it back to your hand. Um, the, the point of this is really just to kind of be able to cycle it through and, um, you know, you might get to quest with it, uh, if you get it down early. Um, but you know, maybe we just want to draw off of it, um, instead, uh, because we need a draw. Um, Pascal, um, I think having an evasive is uh, necessary right now. We're running four copies of the crab so that we can boost uh, Pascal uh, to take out Diablos and take out, um, you know, Pegasus and, and other uh, evasive threats that um, everyone seems to be running right now. Um, you know, that could change if the meta shifted, but I, I think going into Chicago, that's a pretty safe um, get right now. Uh, four copies of, of Mim, four copies of Fox, uh, four copies of Crab. Um, Li Sheng is kind of a great card here. Um, it's a, a shift card, but we're we're not playing the, the lower cost uh, Li Sheng. Um, so we're just planning to play this on three. Um, your characters with four or more strength get plus one lore. So uh, the kind of ideal curve here um, looks like uh, a one drop, um, then Flynn, uh, and then either playing Mim and bouncing your one drop back. Um, you know, hopefully you played Pascal on turn one, Pascal was evasive on turn two, could quest, uh, you played Mim, you bounced Pascal back, and now you've got four strength on board for Flynn, which is going to be hard for a lot of decks to kind of compete with. Um, and you can kind of take that, uh, that three points. Um, and then after that, uh, you know, we look into dropping Sisus and Li Shangs combined with our snakes and our Pascals and our magic brooms and um, that kind of thing. Uh, at that point, you know, we'll start working in uh, drawing with uh, rabbits and uh, friends. Um, that's uh, still here. It's a, a pretty core part of the deck. Um, you've got your goats. Your goat also has four um, strength. So goat can come in and quest for two, which I think is uh, really big, right? Sometimes you end up kind of inking goat because uh, you don't have the bounce for him or, or whatever. But I think um, being able to play goat and have goat quest for two is uh, pretty dangerous. And um, you know, it has to be answered very, very quickly. Um, and then you've got Sisu. So if you, you know, if you don't have Fox, uh, you can go Flynn, Sisu. Sisu is going to be probably a six strength, um, <coughs> six or seven strength character <coughs> at that point. It's going to be hard for them to compete with that unless you're on the draw and they have their own Sisu. Um, and their Sisu might be higher than yours. So that's kind of the one um, place that's a little bit difficult um, to to handle. In that matchup, in the mirror match, it's really important to keep a copy of Brawl so that you can remove their Flynn early on. Um, and I, at that point, I wouldn't even try to compete with, with um, playing my Sisu. I would just Brawl on three to remove their Flynn and then uh, worry about building my board state. Um, what else here? I, the rest of this is pretty simple stuff um, and pretty standard Ruby Amethyst stuff. Uh, we've got uh, Goat and Rabbit, um, Maui, 
I'm running Yzma. Um, I'm running Yzma because we're not running that kind of higher end targeted removal in Maleficent. We're not running um, more Medusas. We're not running, um, you know, uh, be prepared. And so Yzma here, you know, kind of gives us an escape hatch for the Tomatoas that will come on the board um, that are, are pretty dangerous and that are kind of must answer threats. Um, but we can also, you know, Yzma our own um, cards back into our deck, specifically Rabbit. Yzma, playing Yzma on Rabbit is really powerful. You end up getting to draw three cards off of it. Um, and that's uh, just, it, it's just really powerful. Um, and then Yzma also has four strengths. So um, if you have Yzma down on board and you play Li Sheng, um, you know, Yzma is now questing for three. Um, and that really helps uh, us move uh, on the lore board very, very quickly. Um, you know, this is not the RP of old that is like hang around for a long time, control the board state, um, and just kind of exhaust your opponent and then beat them. This is a very proactive deck and a, a very um, difficult deck to beat. I, I have a, a, a good record with this on, on Pixelborn. So we'll see how it plays in paper. We'll see how it plays in person. Um, but I think this could be pretty good into the kind of slower meta um, that I'm anticipating this weekend uh, with Sapphire Steel and Red Blue. Um, you know, I know we're going to see a decent amount of um, uh, of discard. Um, I, this deck is not the worst in to discard because we do have a decent amount of draw. Um, and so we can sometimes just outdraw them. Um, in those matchups, you really have to focus on like, okay, I'm going to play my rabbit. I'm going to bounce my rabbit. I'm going to play my rabbit. I'm going to bounce my rabbit, you know, and just try to keep drawing as much as possible. Um, you know, and then getting your Yzma out, that kind of thing. Um, Yzma is there in part for that discard matchup to give us that kind of additional um, card draw. We could also run Dolores, um, you know, as a card draw or a Maleficent. Um, but, you know, Maleficent is only a like 2 2 um, body. Dolores is a 3 3. Um, and so I've decided to opt for the more expensive Yzma. Um, because it's a 4-4 and because it'll it'll take the Li Sheng buff. Um, I think Li Sheng is actually one of the most important cards in this deck, and I tend to not exert him um, because I don't want him removed. Um, I'm not running Lumiere, which I think a lot of uh, decks might. I felt like it was more important to kind of keep the kind of core purple bounce package in place here. Um, got two copies of Medusa, uh, four copies of Brawl, um, four copies of Friends, and four copies of Be King Undisputed. And this is a, a, a card that I'm a really big fan of. Um, I haven't really seen this card kind of take its place in the meta yet, um, but I think it's in a list like this. Um, this card gives us so much flexibility because we can sing it with our rabbits. We can sing it with our uh, Merlins. We can sing it with our Mauis. We can sing it with our Yzmas even if we need to. Ideally, we should be questing with Yzma. But um, being able to sing it with a rabbit that only quests for one and being able to remove a character and then play Medusa um, is just very good. Um, it's it's really, really strong. And uh, even hard casting this on four, if you need to, to remove a target, um, you know, you have to be a little bit more creative, right? Like, you know, we want to be like challenging and removing some of the stuff that's exerted and then and then we play this uh, to remove, you know, the threat that we want to remove, right? Um, so you, you have to think the lines through a little bit more, you know, like you kind of do with Tremaine. Um, I I like that. You know, I, I think Medusa is so limited in RP because of that three strength targeted. Um, that's why I'm only running two. You know, I think it's important. Um, to be able to answer a beast or a Robin Hood or, you know, some of those uh, targets. Uh, but I think it's just as important to um, be able to have consistent removal like this that you can sing uh, with 
a character like this on four that is one-sided. Um, I might play around in this deck with running like a copy or two of the big Sisu um, because we can shift it. Um, but I wasn't quite sure where I could take out, you know, maybe it's like I take out a crab or two, um, you know, uh, I don't really want to take out any Flynn's, Sisu's, Li Shang's. Don't want to take out any more one drops. I'm already only at eight, um, you know, and I, I can't really take it out from this core package, which means, you know, you're going to be taking it from Medusa, Yzma, Brawl, or or King, um, and 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 maybe that's a consideration of like maybe we drop uh, a copy of King, maybe we drop a copy of Brawl, um, and and we put in two two big CCs to kind of give us that kind of wider board wipe, um, in case we do fall behind. But in my experience, most of the time we don't fall behind because we're more proactively controlling the board um, rather than. Uh, passively per controlling the board, uh, which I feel like uh, RP sometimes has been guilty of doing in the past, where it's like, I'm going to spend the entire game bouncing my rabbit and my crab and my, you know, I'm going to quest this for one and bounce it back to my hand and whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I just don't think that's... Um, you waste a lot of time doing nothing, it feels like sometimes. So... Um, you know, hopefully the things that we're doing have more value because we can quest our Flynn and we can like replay our Flynn to protect it um, so that we can gain that three lore. Um, you know, our, our threats are bigger now earlier. Um, and then, you know, that forces them to answer us too, as well as not just build their own board state, which is, I think, something that RP can struggle with a little bit. And, and that's why it's kind of needed be prepared in the, in the past. All right, uh, last deck. Um, and this one is, is mostly for fun. Um, but uh, we're looking at playing uh, one of the 3v3 events with some friends while we're there. Um, and with the ink combinations, the one that was left uh, was Amethyst and Amber. Um, and so uh, I have put together kind of an update on Josh Paltrow's list um, from Atlanta. Uh, I, it's pretty significantly different, um, but it's kind of my attempt at a purple fossa for set four. Um, and uh, this is, is where I've kind of landed with that. So um, we start with the Magic Broom, uh, the new one drop from uh, set four. I think this is just a great card. Um, you know, whenever you play another character, you may banish this character to draw a card. Um, that's pretty powerful, being able to bring that back with Perdita and uh, immediately play another card to then be able to banish this to draw a card, um, you know, I think is, is pretty helpful. Four copies of Pascal for, for the same reasons, um, so that we can play Crab and, and remove evasive threats. Uh, four copies of Cusco. Um, again, card draw, uh, two or four copies of, uh, snake. I think one of the really fun lines in this deck that, um, I've really enjoyed is, uh, pulling snake back from, uh, the discard and, um, returning Perdita to my hand after she has quested, uh, and then replaying her. So she's already on the board. Um, you know, they weren't able to remove her by the time it gets back to my turn. I quest her for two. I return Snake. I bounce Perdita back to my hand. I replay Perdita and I pull um, something back out of my discard. So now, you know, I've I've brought out two characters from my discard. I've kept Perdita safe by re uh, readying her, essentially replaying her in the ready state um, so that she can't be challenged. Um, and that's just super powerful. It's just really, really powerful. Um, and, uh, I think that line is, is a really creative line. Um, <clears throat> we're running the two drop broom here. Uh, whenever you play this character, you may shuffle a card from any discard into its player's deck. Um, and I, I've included this, you know, I, I don't know if this is optimal. I think, you know, maybe it would be more optimal to play just like a Hades or, or, um, 
you know, the six drop Snow White or something like that. Um, but what I, what I kind of like about this is that I can grab, you know, a Rapunzel or a Perdita or a Mufasa that is in my discard and I can put it back into my deck. Um, and, uh, give myself another chance to draw that in games that go a little bit longer and a little bit more grindy, right? I can increase the percentage that I will draw a Mufasa or a Perdita. Um, it's also, you know, a two drop, so it can uh, be brought back by Perdita, um, you know, to, to return something um, to your deck. Um, one copy of Pinocchio, um, you know, this deck doesn't really have any way to remove um, ready characters. And so I think you have to run a copy of Pinocchio. I'd like to run more, honestly, but um, just space wise, you know, the, the MIM bounce package takes up so much of your uh, card uh, bandwidth in this deck. Um, it, it's a little tricky. Um, because we're running the eight brooms, um, instead of running Piglet, um, I have uh, moved to running Yen Sid. Uh, from set four. When you play this character, if you have a character named Magic Broom in play, you may draw a card. And then while you have two or more Broom characters in play, this character gets plus two lore. So um, similar effect to Piglet on the, the second portion of that. Um, one less strength than Piglet, so it, it doesn't trade as effectively. It doesn't do as much damage back to other characters. Um, but it does have that three body instead of a two body, which I think is significant. It can't be removed by those two damage spells um you know they have to expend more resources on it so um that's one of the reasons i'm using um yen sid instead of piglet um you know maybe there's a world in which i can include both uh you know in some way i had, I had tried to do that but i you know i had like dropped down uh, a rabbit and dropped down a crab and you know dropped down a kuzco and um i, I don't know i i i liked I think you need those tools. So um, we're we're running just yet instead. And then, you know, the, we've got a lot of the kind of rest of the deck here. We've got um, Fox, we've got Crab, uh, Rapunzel, Goat, uh, Rabbit. Um, I'm running the four copies of Goat here um, instead of, I think, the two that Josh was running. Um, I think, you know, just being able to close the game out with Goats is, is um, super powerful. I am not running the um, Fairy Godmother package, um, which I know is another way to exert characters. Um, you know, I, again, I just felt like dropping the two goats wasn't really worth it um, to kind of fit that package in. Um, I wanted to, you know, try out this broom, um, you know, sub package um, as well. Uh, so I don't know th that might be the wrong decision in the long run, but uh, it, it's one that um, I've been testing out and, and has been doing okay. Um, two copies of Peter Pan Shadow, um, which is here just as an aggressive quester. It also has evasive and rush, which allows our foxes to be able to hit Diablos and um, you know, th that kind of thing. We only have the one rush character. So, you know, maybe there's a world that we kind of transition off of this um, and move in a different direction. But um, you know, I think we have to have some sort of answer for evasives. And I, I don't know if Pascal by itself is enough. Um, <clears throat> with crab, you know, that requires those two cards Then we've got the, these two cards. So, um, it would be nice to have a little bit of a better, like single card answer, but, um, yeah, we're, we're just, we, we don't really have that. Um, <clears throat> um, Mufasa, Perdita, uh, one copy of Chernabog, and then uh, four copies of Yzma. Um, for similar reasons for the um, RP aggro list that I, I just shared, um, I'm running four copies of Yzma here for kind of that hard removal if I need to. It sucks to give them two cards, but sometimes you just have to get a Tomatoa off the board, and I feel like this deck would really struggle with that, um, you know, without running uh, an Yzma. Um, so uh, that's why she's in here. Um, we also, again, have that combination of being able to Yzma our own rabbit and be able to draw three cards. So um, these are the decks that I'm planning on taking to Chicago. Um, I uh, hope to see some of you there. And, and if you're there and you see me, um, feel free to flag me down. Um, and uh, good luck and have fun this weekend in Chicago, everyone.